Hello, and welcome to another edition of Orthopedic Sports Medicine Patient Educational Series with Dr. Adam Jaraki. If you are watching this video, it is likely because you have been told in my office that you have a very specific type of rotator cuff tear called a subscapularis tear. In this surgical animation, we are going to look at the right shoulder. As we zoom in on the right shoulder here, there are a number of structures that we want to look at. First, this is the ball of the ball and socket. The socket is deep down inside here. This is your collarbone up here. Here's your shoulder blade as it comes around from the back. The muscles with their respective tendons are what make up the rotator cuff. When we discuss a rotator cuff tear, the grand majority of those represent tears of the supraspinatus tendon, which is the tendon on top of the ball. However, on occasion, we see more specifically tears of the tendon that goes in the front of the ball coming from this muscle down here called the subscapularis tendon. Although it is possible to see isolated tears of the subscapularis tendon as we see in this surgical animation, oftentimes tears of the subscapularis are associated with much larger tears that extend into the supraspinatus tendon as well. But for the purposes of demonstrating a specific subscapularis tear, we are going to concentrate on fixing the subscapularis in this video. Please refer to my video on general rotator cuff repairs if you would like to see a repair of the supraspinatus tendon. So here we have made access to the shoulder via a cannula or a portal. We have identified here that there is a tear of the upper border of the insertion of the subscapularis tendon. Immediately adjacent to that area is the long head of the biceps tendon. In the office, we probably discussed that when you have a tear of the subscapularis tendon, it can cause this tendon to come out of place and maltrack. And if this tendon is maltracking, or if it is significantly torn or has disease that could cause pain or symptoms, we also want to address the biceps at the time of a subscapularis repair. So in this particular video, we have cut the biceps tendon, drilled a hole down here in the biceps groove, and reattached the tendon down here. This is called a biceps tenodesis procedure. When you reattach the tendon down further on the humeral head, it no longer can flip back and forth and is much more stable. Also, if there was disease tendon extending up into the joint, we have now eliminated that potential source of pain or symptoms. The other option for the biceps tendon is a biceps tenotomy where the tendon is simply released at this time. For more information regarding the advantages and disadvantages of a biceps tenotomy versus tenodesis, please see my video on biceps pathology. So initially we want to come in and remove any spurs on the undersurface of this bony prominence right here. This is called the coracoid process. And a bony spur on this area can dig into your subscapularis tendon causing impingement of the tendon and can lead to these sorts of tears. So now we have opened up the space underneath the coracoid to allow more room for this subscapularis tendon. At this point we're going to prepare the bone where the rotator cuff tendon needs to be reattached. We want to create a nice bony bleeding surface so that when we do our repair, the, the tendon comes back to the bone. So now we have placed a stitch into the tendon. We want to create additional access with another portal in the front. We will bring the stitches out the front of the shoulder and place them into an anchor. 
We then will punch a hole in the bone where we want the tendon to reattach. We will slide the anchor down along this stitch and then screw the anchor into position, effectively stitching the tendon back to the bone. We will then remove the excess and this is your final repair. So now we have brought the subscapularis tendon back out to length. We have stitched the tendon back down to the bone with a little screw and have completed the repair of the subscapularis. I would like to thank Arthrex for providing the implants necessary to perform an arthroscopic subscapularis repair. I would also like to thank Arthrex for providing the surgical animation to perform this video. I hope this video has helped you to better understand the difference between a subscapularis repair and a traditional rotator cuff repair. Have a good day.